Hi guys, welcome back to the Player YouTube and you join me today with a new car from Peugeot. This is the 208. It's a fantastic looking car, but what does it go like? What does it run on and how does it all work? Well, let's check it out. Let's get it out on the road. Let's get underneath it and get inside and give you our evaluation of this new car from Peugeot. So around at the front of the Peugeot 208, they've developed this lovely new, very, very bold grille. You see, it's really nice. And you've got these sweeping lights that run around here. On the higher trim levels, you can get the full LEDs here that match this LED running light down here as well. Um, there are four different trim levels, but I'll discuss that when we get inside the car, because a lot of it is to do with what's inside the car. You do get, as standard, some nice 16-inch alloys, which are around there. And you'll also notice in homage of the old 205 GTI's days back in the 80s, you've got the plastic wheel covers that go around the, uh, around the, the actual wing itself. It's all quite nice, all looking rather smart with all these lovely different angles. So under the bonnet, the Peugeot has a few different options when it comes to engines. You've got a three-cylinder petrol engine. It's a 1.2 and develops, well, there's three different variants of that petrol engine. It develops 75 horsepower, 100 horsepower, and the top of the range is 138 brake horsepower. So there's a bit of a choice there. Personally, I'd recommend the higher one because it's got that little bit more torque. On the diesel engine, you get a four-cylinder diesel engine. It's a 1.5 litre, and that develops around about 100 horsepower. So unless you're doing mile after mile after mile on the motorway, which I doubt you're going to be in a car like this, probably stick to the petrol engine. There is also an E208, and as its name suggests, it's an electric car. And that one has a range of around 200 miles, which isn't bad, from a 50 kilowatt engine but it is also the fastest out of all the motors that you can get for this car in a time of around eight seconds from 0 to 60. But there you go, there's your engine choices and what we really need to do now, take a look around the back, see how big it is inside. Let's go do it. Round at the back, it's a very pretty car. It remains pretty all the way around this car. And also you'll notice here, this whole area is very 205, that old sort of, you know, 205 shape rear haunches that it used to have. However, this one won't kill you, if you get my drift, if you ever owned one or driven one. Um, across the back here, you get this nice big plastic diffuser over here with the brake light built in. Now, the good thing about these is they deflect not only the wind to make it more aerodynamic, but also all the mud and the muck that comes off the road. And that will just shoot straight over the top without clouding the vision here at the back. However, if you do get a lot of dirt on the back here, you have a wash wipe which is, comes as standard with all the different models as well. There's a big plastic piece runs across the middle there to these beautiful LED lights on the corners here. And they, again, represent the claws of the lion. If you look there, there's three claws, like he's going like that at the back. Really like all these little touches, these details are really nice. I love the low slung back as well. It's got almost a diffuser style at the back here. And you get a large fog light in the middle there as well. All in all, I mean, as I said, a very, very pretty car. And I think it does the old 205 a lot of justice. Let's have a look inside and see how much literage there is inside this car. The bonnet release, the bonnet, the boot release catch is under here. So you just put your fingers under there. It's not electronically assisted, but it does have some decent gas struts on the side here. So you don't have to lift too hard. And there you have it, the common old garden parcel shelf. And unfortunately, it's one of those horrible ones that you know what happens when I find these in cars. If they don't go underneath there or some, oh look, I can't even get it out. You have to bang, I mean, it is a waste. Come on, manufacturers, lose these. Give us something more interesting, something more valuable to take around in the car with us. Yeah, maybe like a space saver or something, because the cost of these must run into thousands. And what do we do with them? That, because they are completely useless, absolutely useless. If you're gonna go out and you need to use that, you're gonna have that sat on your lap. That's the only thing I can say. Right, 310 liters of boot space in here. It's not the biggest, and I can tell you now, if you're a golfer, you're not gonna get your clubs in here, not flat anyway. They will go at an angle, but they won't go flat. Trust me, I've tried it. Um, underneath here, well, you're not gonna find the space over because they spent so much money on the parcel shelf, they didn't wanna get, they made that an option. And even on this car, there isn't even an option for a space saver. What you get, ah, oh, well, of course, yes, I forgot. You get this stuff, and it's called a puncture repair resin. 
And what happens is you get a puncture and your tyre goes down. You come out of the supermarket or the, the school where you've just dropped the kids off. And what you're supposed to do is release this stuff into the tyre. And you move the tyre forward, just roll the car slightly, and it coats it all the way round. And then you use this little pump that it comes with in here. Yes, this thing. So you plug that in the 12 volt adapter, which by the way, there isn't one in the back here, just to let you know. So you're now gonna have to use the one at the front. Um, and then hopefully it will pump back up. No, it doesn't work. Trust me, this does not work. It is the most useless, stupid thing anyone has ever come up with. And the reason I'm saying that is, you guessed it. It happened to me three weeks ago, the first time ever. And I thought, ah, oh, don't worry. I said to my other, my other half, my partner, don't worry, sit there, I'll sort this out. I don't even need to jack the thing up. I can just inject this stuff in and we'll be on our way in about three minutes. No problem at all. Were we? Heck, we weren't. We waited there three hours for the rescue services to come and get us out of trouble because these things are absolutely pointless. And even then, we then had to wait for a man to come with a tyre and refit the tyre because this stuff had ruined the tyre and it couldn't be filled because it was such a large hole in the tyre. This wasn't going to work. Absolutely mad. If you want to look at that video, click up here now and I'll put it up for you because I actually recorded what you can do when, you know, things do happen because there is a little kit you can buy. Watch that video up there that's just come up. So we've established 310 litres with the seats up. There is a huge gap here that drops down and there's no scuff guard on the back here. And this will get scratched, absolutely scratched. It's without a shadow of a doubt. If you're going to be putting stuff in and out of here, even a dog jumping up, it's going to get scratched. So it's going to look appalling inside about six months to a year. It's going to be really bad. Another thing I've noticed, okay, so it is very easy to push the seats down. There's a little clip over there. And there's another one over here. And you do get a reasonable amount of space, but come in here, guys, come here, come here. I want to show you, look, look at that. So if you're trying to slide something in here, look at the, look at the height on that seat. It's absolutely horrendous. So with, not with, only with the drop here, but with that there, you're not going to be able to get anything in and out of here. It's really pointless. At least the seats go down. So what we need to do now, really, is check in the back for the passengers. So let's jump in there and just see if it's comfortable enough for another three people across the middle there. So here we are in the back for the passengers. And as I expected, the seats are quite comfortable. However, you do need to make sure that your little headrest is pushed right up, because otherwise it gets in the back of your neck there, like I just had there. And it's quite nice. You've got plenty of uh, leg room underneath the, the seat in the front there. And I love the way these seats have actually been shaped. So your knees, you're getting that extra little bit of knee room because it is quite tight, everything in here. Um, and coming, you know, when we're talking about tight, I think once these seats have settled in a little bit, you do get a reasonable amount of headroom in this car. But what you don't get, if you see the shape of this roof, where it rolls around like this, if you're sitting up here, if you go around the corner too fast, then you're going to hit your head like that. <laughs> it's probably the idea is you could just put your head like that and, and hang on. Because back in the days of driving one of these when it was a 205 GTI, I'd have had to hang on like that. And it would have been a good way of keeping my head in the right position to see where I was going. Okay, joking apart, reasonable sized windows. They've got a little tint in them as well. So it's gonna try and keep it a bit cooler in the back here during the summer. Uh, there's no independent heating in the rear or cooling. So it might get a little bit warm and toasty in, in the summer months. Um, the door itself, well, it's a rather small door. So you do tend to, it's quite difficult to get in and out of this car. Cause if you look the angle as well, and you can see I'm actually gonna have to go like that to get out. You've got a you know, sort of thing that I mentioned to my yoga instructor that I need a little bit more. Yeah, I think you get the point there. Um, it comes with Isofix points and they are the ones that are hidden behind zips here. Now I reckon inside a year with the kids jumping in and out of here and people playing around with them, they're gonna break as well. So you're probably not gonna be able to get access to that. But then, you know, I'm sure they'll sell you something at Peugeot that will fix that. Uh, also, I've noticed that the seat belts don't sit back in. They are designed to be hidden down there, but for some reason they just keep popping back out again. Um, there's sort of a like little bit of a design fault on that as well. Um, the finish is not bad. I like the stitching and the material itself is quite, it's quite smooth and nice. Um, and also all the finishing around here is reasonable quality. You don't get the armrest with the double cup holder, unfortunately. So you're forever going to be sitting like that when you get a little bit tired. Um, 
What you do get, and I was quite impressed with this, are two USB charging ports here, which is great if you've got two youngsters in the back here or even adults that need to plug their utensil pieces in, like their little iPads and their phones and things like that. However, on the electric version of this, it's just another two added things to drain that battery when you've got passengers who want to charge their phones up. And trust me, if you've got your phone in the front and all the windscreen wipers and everything, it's going to be a mad dash from Sainsbury's to see if you can make it back home. Sainsbury's, by the way, if you're watching this overseas, is one of our large supermarket chains, one that I actually prefer. Um, even though you'll find that Sainsbury's don't actually have charging points, it is the Morrison's brand who have them. We'll talk about that when we get it out on the road, because that's quite interesting. It's a good point. Another reason that I go on at manufacturers um, about saving money and putting it into things like the Space Saver wheel. Again, you know, these things that they used to be for maps and books. Books, yes. I remember as a kid, hours of driving was the best way to make you car sick was your parents to put books in there that you were told to read, like the, the, the RSPB bird watching book. Oh, I spy with my little, you know, and out it would all come because you're trying to read, you know. Oh, I spotted a magpie. Oh, there you go. Sorry, sister, covered in puke. Oh, well. Um, leg room wise, well, it's, yeah, it's difficult to get around in here. Large transmission tunnel in the middle. And to be honest, I don't think you're going to get three people in the middle. It is one of those where, you know, this is becoming more than a party in the back, if you get my drift. Um, I think I'd rather just stick to the two adults or two large children either side. Guys, let's get around the front and see what it's like up front for the driver, because this, at the end of the day, is a Peugeot 208, and its heritage comes from the old 205. So it's going to be pretty good. Let's go find out. Up front, it, well, you, I just knew it was going to be absolutely amazing in here. Um, I love the steering wheel. It's, it's such a futuristic shape. Uh, we'll start on the right-hand side of the steering wheel because you've got the telephone control here. You've got a scroll button here. Um, the car itself, should mention, by the way, it is keyless, but we'll put it on in a minute so you can see it all light up. Um, you've got the list here on the side. And then you've got your, um, yeah, it's just all bits and pieces, nice little bits and pieces over there. On the left here, you've got the, um, the high Siri button, as I call it. Um, not if you're an Android user, obviously. Um, then it's, uh, hey Alexa, uh, that's over there. So you can just shout that at the car. You don't actually shout the name. You just go, tell me I want to listen to uh, the bangles or something. I don't know, whatever you like listening to. Again, another scroll button there. You can go through the radio stations and your media centers and stuff like that. And below it, there is another two buttons, one is volume up and volume down. Pretty simple, isn't it, really? Um, let's have a look to see how much you've got movement in here. I'm just trying to find, there it is. So, yeah, it's reasonable, backwards and forwards, but not a lot on the up. And the problem is, with this Peugeot steering wheel, that top bit there is right in your field of view. So unless you don't mind driving around like you're driving, so <laughs> like you're sitting on a little go-kart or something, then that's constantly going to be in the way, which is a shame because when you look at that, this is the new Peugeot iCockpit 3D dashboard. You can almost drive it like, you know, it just feels like you want to get hold of this. And this one's got the 10.3 infotainment system, the bigger screen, because the more you go up those trim levels, which we're going to talk about in a second, the bigger the screen gets and things like that. And you get extra bits and pieces, which is really nice. Um, you've got your light it your wipers on the right here your lighting systems are on the left here simple auto side lights and then you've got your uh, fog lights and things like that they're all on that stick there just below it down there is your cruise control and uh, again when you're driving along straight you can't actually see it's there you wouldn't even know it was there so you have to learn how to use it without looking and trust me for a man trying to use his fingers without looking takes a few years. Uh, ladies, you'll probably appreciate where I'm going with that one. Um, in the centre section here, well, we do get a rather large cubby. And it's deceiving because when you look at it, it looks tiny. But when you actually put your hand in there, look, you can almost lose half your arm in there. I was absolutely shocked. I didn't believe that. And you've got a little thing for your coins there, which is rather nice, isn't it? You can just pop that out. Not that we use coins anymore these days or anything, but it's there. Nevertheless, it's there. Nice bit of scratchy piano black. I call it scratchy piano black because, again, guys, you know, I don't want to be the, the harbouring of bad news all the time, but you think by now the manufacturers start to realise that this stuff scratches. It looks nice when you first buy it, but for the guy who's buying it three, four years down the line, this ends up getting scratched and marked. Call it piano black. Get rid of it. Let's get something nice in here, something a bit decent. Okay, so... 
you get a different drive mode on here, so you can change your drive mode over there. You've got a double cup holder, one slightly higher than the other, because I think that one's for an energy drink, and that one's for your water, so one's healthy, one's unhealthy. Um, a couple of different gearbox designs on the Peugeot 208. You get a six-speed manual, you get an eight-speed auto, and obviously with the electric version, you get no gearbox at all, because it's just forward and backwards and parked. Pretty simple, really, isn't it? Um, all of them work absolutely seems. Personally, I like the 8-speed Auto. It's one of the better gearboxes I think Peugeot have ever made. Get a 12-volt adapter down here, which is quite handy, and a quite a nice area here to put bits and pieces. Then, if you push this like that, this is a great bit. This little section here is perfect. I'm going to reach over because I want to show you guys. I'm going to grab my mobile phone. Watch this, because it's this, I call it, the perfect accident scenario. So you can now rest your phone there. And guess what? You can look down and you can push it and you can do things while you're going along. And then all of a sudden you'll be watching YouTube or something and smash because they've made it so easy for you to watch your phone. I think that is very, very dangerous. Guys, don't do it. Don't use it. Just inside there, there's a wireless charger. Put the phone in there and shut it away and turn it off. Let it charge up while you're driving. Use your hands free. Don't have your phone there so you can view it. I know, it you, I know what you're going to say. You're going to go, well, what about the maps? Well, there is a point to that. But then go up the next level in the trim level and you get the maps. I know a lot of reviewers have gone, you don't need the maps. You can use Waze. You can use Google. Well, yeah, you can. But then you've got to look down, haven't you? Because it's there and you're driving along like that. And what's going to happen? You're going to have an accident. So invest in a, in a map for your car. It's, you know, makes sense. Um, you get two USBs, one either side here. Again, in the electric version, more, more, more things to drain that battery. I love the little piano thing across here. They call it the piano keys. They are touch sensitive as well, and they're really good. Um, the original ones I didn't like because you couldn't see over the top. But on these ones, you've actually got it as perfect. You can see all what's going on. You can memorize it as well. Glove box, let's have a look in the glove box. Okay, so luckily, no big, well, it's tiny, isn't it? I mean, what a waste of space that is. I'm not really that bothered. Let's uh, put, the, put the power on. Oh, there we go, and it's gonna fire up for me now. As I said, it's keyless. There we go. I think I've turned it off again because I did it too quick. It takes a while for things to happen in this car. Um, I just wanna show you the screen I like because it really is a nice screen. I'm always banging on about the reflection in the screen and the sticky fingers. But somehow, Peugeot have managed to get one of these that you don't actually have that problem. Um, the screen Now, to turn the screen on, you have to use three fingers, apparently. Nothing seems to be working, so <laughs> that's a good start, isn't it? We'll try again. Keep rolling, cameraman, because I'm going to get this, and the guys want to see it in real time. And I, There you go. Energy economy mode activated system is going to switch off. No, 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 don't. There we go. Stopped it this time. Oh, <laughs> it's gone again. So it does have an energy saving mode. Okay, we'll talk about that later when we get out on the road. <laughs> It's good, it works, there's no lag, trust me. I like all the finish on this as well, it's really nice. It's got like this faux carbon fibre around here. And when you actually pull the door to, it sort of continues all the way around here. Let's get this car out on the road. Let's go and have a drive of it and see what we think of this new little Peugeot 208. So here we are guys, we're out on the road in the 208. And it's one of those cars, I've, I've got a lot of uh, sort of nostalgia built in, up in me from this car. I owned a couple of Peugeots back in the 80s. I was lucky to aspire to a 1.9 GTI. And when I was a young, sort of young person out on the road, it was everything to me. These little cars, and they, you know, in the years that this has been around, it really hasn't changed. There's slight differences, obviously there's a little bit more home comforts in this car. It's probably a lot safer as well. Um, the only thing is you, you have to spend money on things like blind spot mirrors and active lane keep assist and distance control and things like that. Everything on this car is extra and you could find yourself spending an upwards of £30,000 for a little car like this, which in a way I feel is just slightly over the budget for people who would be buying this type of car. And it doesn't make it as viable as some of the competition, which is a shame in a way because it is such a well-built car. It's very quiet out on the roads. So the suspension is excellent. It's a little bit wallowy in the electric version of this car because the battery weight in the back tends to make it float a little bit. However, 
on the petrol and the diesel, you do get you know a really good feel for the car, how it used to be back in the day. Slightly stiffer suspension. You've got the different driving modes that you can set up, put it into the sport mode. You've got the eco mode and there's a normal mode as well in this car. So there's tons of options when, when you're actually out on the road driving it. Good all round visibility. My only bone of contention is with this car, there is a very large panel here. And when you're pulling out on a roundabout or on a, on a blind sort of bend, you have to be really careful. You have to actually lean forward to be able to look around to see what's coming. And that, I have noticed, can be a bit of a hindrance. As far as economy goes, in the petrol engine, you should be returning around 37 to 50 to the gallon, which is pretty good for a little 1.2. Um, and on the diesel, it should be anywhere between 50 and 70 miles to the gallon. And on the electric, you've got a 210 mile range. But don't forget with the battery, once you start using lights, windscreen wipers, you know, anything that's sucking juice out of that battery, that range is going to come down very, very quickly indeed. And also on the certain levels of the trim levels on this car, you get a lot of USB ports and places to plug stuff in. The wireless charger on this car, for example, you know, in the electric, that's going to suck the life out of the battery. So you have to be really careful of that. Um, all in all, a great car to get out on the road. I highly recommend a drive in this car because I think at the end of the day, it's all about that personal, you know, that personal feel when you get into a car and you actually go, you know what, I really like driving this. I've noticed that the seat is a little bit low. However, I find that makes it feel a little bit more sporty at the end of the day. Anyway, all in all, I think we should summarise what we think of the Peugeot 208. So there you have it guys, that was the new Peugeot 208. You've seen around it, you've seen inside it, and we've had it out on the road. But at the end of the day, it's up to you whether you wanna go and get a test drive in one of these. I would highly recommend doing that, and I'm sure the guys down at Peugeot would be more than happy to help you out. Price-wise, well, the car starts at an entry level of around 17 and a half thousand pounds, and it starts on the trim levels with the active, and that will get you exactly what you see here. If you want to move up the line you go to the allure and that will get you 17 inch alloys you get four usb ports you get a digital instrument cluster which you saw in there that 3d id compact cop cockpit whatever you want to call it um and then you go up to the gt line which gets you even more bits and pieces in there as well and finally the gt so those four different levels which of trim levels which are really great however if you want the electric version of this, the E208 is going to cost you a starting price of £29,000. And you have to ask yourself, why would you pay an extra £12,000 for something that can't really at the moment be justified, in my opinion. But that is my humble opinion. If you feel it's for you, then go down and give one a test drive. Thanks for watching. You've been watching me, AJ the Player. And don't forget the player is part of a much bigger organisation. We don't just do YouTube, no, of course we don't. We have a magazine that was specifically designed for guys, guys like me, guys like you. It's got boats, it's got cars, it's got golf, it's got food, and so on and so on and so on. Everything us guys absolutely love. And it's free for you guys, because you watch me on YouTube. And all you've got to do is go to www.theplayer.co.uk. Hang on a minute, here it comes, there you go. How's that? www.theplayer.co.uk. Go there, just fill in. I'm not, I'm not a big data capture person. You probably gather that. Um, all I need is your name and an email. And you can download it or you can view the whole thing online. It's 200 pages. It's great fun. It's everything you're going to love. And it'll give you something to do during your off time. Don't forget, go and enjoy it. It's on me. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next week with another car. I don't know what it's going to be yet. Is it a car? Is it a boat? Is it a plane? No, it's Superman. That's what we used to say. There you go. That's the ending. Thank you very much, guys. Catch you next week.